Hello and welcome to the 2020 Fox 61 Student News Awards. I'm going to be your host, Aisha Bo. And uh, due to the social distancing guidelines in place, we could not have the award ceremony in person, but we still felt it was important to celebrate all the great entries the students sent in to Fox 61 this school year. The Fox 61 Student News Program helped spark an interest in television journalism in high school and middle school with students from all across Connecticut. In the entries in this year's categories showcase some of the best our students have to offer. Now, before we get to the awards, there are a few people who would like to extend their congratulations to all the nominees in this year's categories. Hey, it's U.S. Senator Chris Murphy sending a big congratulations to all of the Fox 61 Student News Award winners. Um, telling stories is more important now than ever as this country is going through uh, a crisis uh, like none of us have seen in our lifetimes. And we rely, uh, especially on local news, uh, to be able to tell us what's happening and to uh, give us um, the good news uh, about examples that we can follow in order to uh, be able to survive and uh, beat this deadly virus. So uh, thanks to all of you for putting in work as new young journalists and thanks to Fox 61 uh, for the recognition you're giving students today. Greetings to all of the participants of the Fox 61 Student News Program and everyone watching on Facebook Live. I had the pleasure of attending the launch of the season and saw firsthand the creativity and hard work that you and your peers put into your broadcasts. The thing that stood out to me the most is that those stories were created and told through your perspective as Connecticut high school students. Student voice is powerful. This program empowered you to elevate your voice and you embrace that opportunity by producing some fascinating content on topics of importance to the residents of our state. College and career readiness is a priority for us at the Connecticut State Department of Education as hands-on learning experiences are becoming increasingly important to colleges and employers. Your participation in this program is an asset and puts you one step ahead of many of your peers as you apply to college and make post-graduation plans. In addition to getting a first-hand look at the world of broadcast media, I hope you also learn something about yourselves, about making your voices heard, and recognize the value of this experience towards shaping your post-secondary and career goals. I'm so proud of each of you and inspired by your dedication to your own growth and development. I would also like to thank Fox 61 for providing this unique opportunity to Connecticut students. Congratulations and best of luck, especially to our class of 2020, on your future success. And now it's time for our first category, the Big Y Locally Grown Awards, sponsored by Big Y Supermarkets, and here to announce the nominees and winners. Hi all, my name is Morgan Spencer. I'm the Manager of Marketing Services for Big Y Foods, and I have the privilege today of announcing the winners for the Big Y's Locally Grown Award. The nominees are Daniel Hand High School, Madison, Connecticut's Joe Sandora and Sam Stein for Madison Arts Barn. Jonathan Law High School, Milford, Connecticut's Megan Gorman, Eden Van Waveren, and Marley Ackley for Educational Center for the Arts. And Daniel Hand High School, Madison, Connecticut's Brian Bierney and Nick Lynch for Plastic Bag Law. Norwich Free Academy's Norwich, Connecticut, Aaliyah Colley and Louise Doiren for Telegraph Final. Suffield Middle School, Suffield, Connecticut's Clara Hulasikun for Second Chance Rant. And the winner of the Big Wise Locally Grown Award goes to Brian Bierney and Nick Lynch from Daniel Hand High School for Plastic Bag Law. Thank you all for your participation in this great program and thank you to Luke Arsenault, the teacher at Daniel Hand High School for supporting your students in this program. 10 cents, so minuscule, but so critical at the same time. Since the start of 2020, stores locally are switching to 10 cent paper bags from environment devastating plastic ones. The town of Madison has instituted a new act to eliminate plastic bags entirely. The positive impact is being led by Fran Brady, the founder of the Bring Your Own campaign. My wife and I, we just re recently retired and we used to walk out on the Hammonasset Beach State Park. But after a while we started looking down and all around us was trash, litter, and a lot of it was plastic, plastic bottles. We started saying, well, this is not right. And there was an organization that was organized against plastic bottles. It was called BYO Guilford. And I said, you know what, we can do it here in Madison as well. Bags was just a the starting point to get people aware. It's really all the single-use plastics that we use. You can just go out there now and you won't see many bags at all. 
The Bring Your Own campaign has caused a ripple effect throughout the state as now all stores statewide are mandated to put a 10 cent price on their paper bags. We eliminated plastic bags in August of 2019. Uh, and so at that point, we had paper bags available, but we started charging 10 cents for the paper bags. I think it's great. Um, it forces, well, I don't know if forces is the right word because, yeah, they can still use bags by getting paper bags if they want to use something um, every day. But most of the customers, I'd say 90%, are using reusable bags. So they're buying the bag once and are using it over dozens and dozens and dozens of times. So they're not even really buying the paper bags as, uh, as much as you'd expect. And certainly now that we've eliminated the plastic, um, that's not even an option anymore. So I think it's great. Plastic bags have caused many problems throughout our community. It's time to start making more eco-friendly decisions. From outside of Daniel Hand, this is Brian Byrne reporting. I started selling to the market every day. I built up a business like you wouldn't believe after 10 years. Big Y has been extremely supportive of local agriculture. Because they see the value in that local brand, that local farm or local producer. Consumer, they're the ones that really benefit in the end. People want to buy something that's produced close to them and you're putting your money right back into your own community. Knowing there's people behind it and there's a lot of work that goes into it. It, it is more than food, it's community. The next award is the Hard News Category Award. This category includes stories that could lead off the Fox 61 News any day of the week. And without exception, all these nominees submitted high caliber finished products. First off, a historic journey from Kennedy High School, submitted by Janila Weaver, Lydia Vergara, and Shevel Shepard. Then there's overscheduling from Cromwell High School, submitted by Olivia Polkowski. Backpack Burden, also Cromwell High School, submitted by Bailey Wilson. And then we have Plastic Bag Law from Daniel Hand High School, submitted by Nick Lynch and Brian Byrne. And Save a Life Tour from Bristol Eastern High School, submitted by Jennifer Black and Haley Madramuto. And we are happy to announce the winner is Overscheduling of Teens, submitted by Olivia Polkowski from Cromwell High School. Teens in our society are flourishing, high accomplishing, and driven individuals. However, for many, doing it all leads to compromises with their health, physically and mentally. So overscheduling can affect anyone in a negative way. We all need downtime, we all need social interaction. We all need physical activity, and life is all about finding a balance of these things. And when that balance gets skewed, it can do a lot to our physical well-being and our mental health in terms of making us feel like we're on track and getting our needs met. Prioritizing regular family meals, sleep, proper exercise, or some simple self-reflecting, relaxing time helps create that healthy, balanced life with school and work. As a teenager in high school, I find it challenging to take on all the different tasks from schoolwork to sports to chores at home and all this different pressure. Um, over scheduling is a big part of my life that I need to work on. The high school level, I think there's a higher expectation to engage in a lot of activities um, and that balance does get thrown off. I think that kids do best when they're engaged in one to two activities at a high level. Um, any more than that, they get spread too thin and they can't give their full energy to what needs to get done and achieve their goals. All of these ideas are skills that we should accumulate now in our lives. Hold on, let me check my schedule. I'm Olivia Polkowski reporting from Cromwell High School for Fox 61 Student News. All right, next up we have the Shet Financial Literacy Award presented by Shet, and here is Connecticut's 83rd State Treasurer, Shanti Wooden, to announce the names of the nominees and the winners. Hi, I'm Connecticut State Treasurer, Sean Wooden. I had the distinct honor of participating in the first ever student news press conference held late last year and was extremely impressed by how well prepared and informed the participating students were. Given the current COVID-19 pandemic, I'm sorry we can't do it again this year, but I'm looking forward to doing it in the future. It was very clear that the teachers and students are very passionate about their involvement in student news. Now, it's time to announce the winners of the Chet Financial Literacy Award. First, congratulations to all the nominees. Each report allowed for a unique perspective on financial literacy. This is an important topic and I'm happy to see it being tackled by the student reporters. 
And the winners of the Czech Financial Literacy Award are Rebecca Calafiori and Vanessa Stolstener from Cromwell High School. The winning story, Got College, Making the Choice, highlights the increasing cost of college, different ways students are keeping costs down, and the importance of saving for college. Thank you to all the students, teachers, and schools for your hard work and participation in this year's student news program. Please join me in congratulating Rebecca and Vanessa, along with all of today's winners on a job very well done. Thank you. As 2020 approaches, the senior class is busy completing college applications and the challenge of making college decisions has quickly okay. crept upon them. The seniors have been receiving assistance from their guidance counselors, parents, and peers during the college process. Well, first of all, the majority of the senior class this year has already applied to college, so this year's senior class is uh, particularly ambitious. Their plans are to start out at a four-year school. Uh, although we have seen some trends in the past couple years of uh, more and more students choosing to start out at a two-year school and then transferring to a four-year school. While seniors are in the midst of picking the right school for them, costs will play a large factor into post-high school plans for students. The treasurer of Connecticut, Sean Wooden, has some tips for saving for college. Putting as much into the CHET program right, is, is the best program that exists uh, in vehicle to save for college. 57% of families who borrow to pay for college say that that was always part of their plan. Therefore, students and families are preparing college saving plans such as CHET and budgeting how much they will be able to cover by borrowing, applying for scholarships, and using savings. Families and students will put additional pressure on keeping the costs of college education down. And I think in terms of our community colleges and our public institutions, uh, there will be pressure and, and programs and policy changes to control the cost and perhaps make it available for uh, families that can't afford it. I'm Vanessa Stolsteiner reporting from the Capitol for Fox 61 Student News. As your kids get older, you start to see things a little differently. College, which once seemed down the road, suddenly seems right around the corner. But with the Chet 529 College Savings Account, you'll be ready. You can begin with as little as $25, earnings grow tax-free, and you'll receive a healthy state tax deduction. So call 855-529-CHET to learn more or visit us at chet529.com. And now to our fourth category, which is the Community Events Awards. This is a category that looks to highlight different events throughout our state. And the nominees have showcased a lot of potential great outings for any family. And the nominees for that category are Hartford Winterfest, Manchester High School, submitted by Kelly Maloney, Annabelle Watson, Meredith Kite, and Samuel Mushinsky. Kent Memorial Library is the next one. Suffield Middle School su uh, submitted by Claire Halassi Kuhn and Lauren Knowles. And then there's Madison Arts Barn submitted from Daniel Hand High School by Sam Stein and Joe Sandora. And last but not least, basketball tournament strives to make it different from Bristol Eastern High School submitted by Kayleen Yorkhill and Zombie Run from Cromwell Middle School submitted by Emily Kowalski, Paula Messina and Sabrina Pereira. And the winner for that category is Hartford Winterfest, submitted by Kelly Maloney, Annabelle Watson, Meredith Kite, and Samuel Mushinsky from Manchester High School. I grew up in Hartford. I work here. Civic Center. Excel Center. A business. Insurance capital. Downtown Hartford and traffic. Yeah. Yeah. When asked about Hartford, Connecticut, ice skating is not the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> However, Winterfest at Bushnell Park has provided skating for 10 years and this winter provided 453 hours of excitement. I like ice skating here because it's a lot of fun and I learn how to control myself when I'm turning and I have like a lot of friends that help me. We only fell one, yeah, fell. one time each, but it's okay. <laughs> it's yeah. nice to be outside, enjoy the weather. It's not really fun in the inside because it's not really cold. In addition to being outside, the ice skating rink has one other special quality that seems to keep people coming. Thank you. Great thing to do with family yeah. since it's free. <laughs> it's for free. Local nonprofit iQuilt organizes Winterfest, and executive director Jackie Mandyke is a firm believer in the price. 
the real impact is that you know people can just come down they can come down for five minutes or two hours and they get to enjoy a free family fun event where they don't have to pay for skate rentals they don't have to pay for skating and they can just come down and have a really nice day outdoors in the middle of winter the contributions are provided by a wide variety of sources, from major companies such as travelers to individual donors. But one thing is for certain. Without everybody coming together and working together to help put Winterfest on, there's no way we would be able to do it or have this great of an impact on the region. As the 2019-2020 Winterfest wraps up, it's clear to see that people are still enjoying this free hidden gem here in Hartford. From Manchester High School in Bushnell Park, this has been Annabelle Watson reporting. And now to our next category, which is the Chesla Education Award. And here to outline the category and to announce the nominees and winners is... Thank you, Aisha. My name is Josh Sherlock, and I am the Assistant Director for Chesla. Chesla is a quasi-state agency dedicated to helping students and families finance the cost of higher education through our financial literacy portal called CT Dollars and Cents, Scholarships, and Low Fixed Rate Loans. We are here to help you navigate the difficult paying for college process. For more information, please visit chesla.org. Chesla annually participates in the Fox Student News Program, and we are continually impressed by the quality and professionalism of the submission. Without further ado, let's take a look at the nominees for the Chesla Education Award. Backpack Burden by Bailey Wilson from Cromwell High School in Cromwell, Connecticut. And Historic Journey by Janwa Weaver, Lydia Vergara, and Chevelle Shepard from Kennedy High School in Waterbury, Connecticut. Educational Center for the Arts by Megan Gorman, Eden Van Waveren, and Marley Ackley from Jonathan Law High School in Milford, Connecticut. Cap Memorial Library by Claire Hulasi Kuhn and Lauren Knowles from Suffield Middle School in Suffield, Connecticut. And last but not least, Overscheduling by Olivia Polkowski from Cromwell High School in Cromwell, Connecticut. Can I get a drum roll, please? And the winners are Claire Hulasi Kuhn and Lauren Knowles, Cap Memorial Library from Suffield Middle School in Suffield, Connecticut. We would also like to thank their teacher, Kevin Mattia. Congratulations on the great work. Ken Memorial Library has had major renovations. With new books and a gorgeous new building, this is the place to be. This project was meant to be a partial renovation and an ADA project. Unfortunately, we did not see the dilemma ahead. The building had a catastrophic environmental issue involving PCBs. Due to the construction, the library has moved into a temporary building located behind the town's highway garage. It was difficult when we first moved. We thought that we would only be out at the most probably nine months, at the very maximum a year, and it turned out to be more than four and a half years. The library is now open to the community for full use and is running various community programs. Ken Memorial Library, though has gone through many problems, has had an amazing comeback. Whether you are here to hang out with friends or read a book, this is the library to be at. It's great. Uh, when we moved here, the library was in its temporary location up the road, which didn't have a lot of room for children's books. This library is the perfect place to grab a book and read with your friends. This has been Claire Holasikun signing off for Fox 61 Student News. Stressed about paying for college? Chesla is a nonprofit resource to help students and families finance the cost of higher education. With our financial literacy portal, scholarships, and low fixed rate loans, we partner with you to succeed. Our Chesla team develops personal relationships with families because we care about the future of our Connecticut students. With an easy online loan application featuring e-signature, eliminate the stress of paying for college. Visit chesla.org today. 
And the sixth category is the feature news stories. And these are those stories, those feel good, lighthearted and tug at your heart emotion stories. And this year's submissions achieve those expectations and more. And the nominees for that category, first off, Broadway Cafe Cart from William J. Johnston Middle School, submitted by Sarah Gianfrido, Julia Lombardo, and Olivia Sabota. And then there's Madison Arts Barn from Daniel Hand High School, submitted by Sam Stein and Joe Sandora. Telegraph Vinyl from Norwich Free Academy, submitted by Louise Doran and Aaliyah Colley. And Shelton Dog Park from Shelton Intermediate School, submitted by Peyton Larkins, Ethan Oku, Joe Vastinak, Marissa Manzo, and Bryn Roscoe. Suffield Oscar winner from Suffield Middle School, submitted by Claire Halassi Kuhn and Lauren Knowles. And the winner for that category is Broadway Cafe Cart, submitted by Sarah Gianfrido, Julia Lombarda, and Olivia Sabota from William J. Johnston Middle School. Most people have to leave the office to get their daily coffee. But the staff at William J. Johnston Middle School in Colchester, Connecticut don't even have to leave their classroom. The Life Skills Program at WJJMS has a coffee cart called the Broadway Cafe that brings the coffee and other refreshments right to teachers' doors. The Broadway Cafe is a wonderful service. They come right to your classroom, and uh, I'm very lucky because they will give me free samples. The teachers and students who run the Broadway Cafe cart create and bake their own recipes. In addition to the baked goods, they sell fresh fruit, trail mix, eggs, and other refreshments. We have all kinds of teas and apple cider. The students that run the cafe cart gain real-world experience by learning how to pick and measure ingredients and collaborate with their peers on preparing the cart for the day. They also learn how to follow kitchen safety rules, how to handle money, and build valuable social skills that they can take with them into other classes. Outstanding! Yeah! Our Broadway Cafe gives our students a variety of wonderful skills to bring with them into the future. Some of those skills are money skills, organizational skills, baking skills, and customer relationship skills. My favorite thing is cutting money and giving the change. I like to see the staff happy. The Broadway Cafe is a nice way to relax after a long day with coffee and a snack while teaching necessary life skills. I'm Julia Lombardo with Fox 61 Student News. Cheers! And now to our final category, which is the Governor's Prevention Award, presented by the Governor's Prevention Partnership. And here to announce the nominees and winners is. Hello, my name is Roland Harmon with the Governor's Prevention Partnership. The Governor's Prevention Partnership is one of Connecticut's statewide prevention organizations. We're a public-private partnership, and our work is to support local communities, faith-based organizations, schools, families and spreading the prevention message so that youth are not overcome by the threat of drugs and alcohol. And the nominees are Cromwell High School, Cromwell, Connecticut. Overscheduling was their title. Olivia Polkowski is the student. Our next nominee, Bristol Eastern High School, Bristol, Connecticut. Save Our Tours, Steers was the focus of their news, reel, uh, news clip. Jennifer Black and Haley Madramadu. Our next nominee, William Johnson Middle School in Colchester, Connecticut. Their title was Broadway Cafe Cart. The students, Sarah Gianfrido, Julia Lombardo, and Olivia Sabata. Our fourth nominee, Cromwell High School, Cromwell, Connecticut. Their news clip was titled Backpack Burden. Bailey Wilson, the student. And our last nominee, John F. Kennedy High School in Waterbury, Connecticut. Their title, An Historic Journey. Students, Jan LaWeaver, Lydia Vergara, and Chevelle Shepard. And the winner for our new segment this year, Cromwell High School, Backpack Burden, Bailey Wilson. And we wanna give a special shout out to the teacher who supported Bailey at Cromwell High School Alicia Barkowski. Thank you, Alicia, for supporting our students. And we also want to lift up that uh, students are the first line of defense in prevention. 
Uh, and so we're going to do all that we can here at the Governor's Prevention Partnership to support student initiatives, student-led initiatives across the state. The average student carries a backpack weighing about 25% of their body weight. The recommended weight is no more than 15%. Because students are carrying on average over 15% of their own body weight, this can cause mechanical and physiological adaptations that can increase injury risk, fatigue, swelling, and discomfort. School backpacks are actually a really real struggle for me because I have 20 pounds on my back walking through the halls all the time and I have to take them off during class and that's when you're on the bus with your athletic bag you have 20 pounds here 20 pounds there so it all adds up. I like to carry my backpack throughout the school day because I know I'm not missing anything ever. Such heavy loads may include changes to one's posture, gait, and physical discomfort. Students, parents, and teachers need to be careful in their consideration of the loads being carried on a daily basis. I do worry about the weight of those backpacks on students. Some of our students are physically very small and you know that's a lot of stress on your back and on your spine. Um, I have never thought about forcing that issue because I kind of feel that those lockers are available to everyone and they're assigned each year and they have a combination so if they really wanted to use them, they would use them. Sometimes students come to me complaining about back pain and have no idea it could be their backpacks until we weigh the backpacks in the clinic and find out how heavy they are and if they don't carry them in the correct way or lighten their load, they could be hurt. I'm Bailey Wilson from Cromwell High School reporting for Fox 61 Student News. Our world has changed and we're evolving with it. The Governor's Prevention Partnership is taking prevention virtual with new ways to mentor young people remotely and answers for parents trying to keep kids safe from drugs, alcohol, and violence. Because to the young people we serve, prevention is more than just a word. Prevention is strength. It is believing in yourself. And stopping something at the root before it can become an even bigger issue. Change themselves for the better and be a part of something bigger. Prevention is needed. Get the prevention resources that your family needs at preventionworkct.org. And we want to say congratulations once again to all the winners and nominees. And be sure we are working out a unique way to get all of you your awards in this time of social distancing. And again, thank you once again to all of our guests and sponsors that make the Fox 61 Student News Program possible. And if you or your school would like to participate in the program next year, you can go ahead and email us at studentnews@fox61.com. Once again, thank you for watching. I'm Aisha Bow for the Fox 61 Student News.